episode, and welcome back to another episode of the Ant Hill Channel. <laughs> On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at my Solenopsis Xyloni colony, and their new nest and outworld that I've just got done building for them. Now, this tank took quite a bit of work, so I have quite a few things to show off to you if you're patient enough to stick around. And I'm going to be sharing a little bit of information about the colony as we go, so let's just jump right in. Well, to start, I needed to find a new nest for them, as their current one was made out of acrylic, and I've come to find out that this is not a very positive material to use when it comes to ants and their nest setup. This is because acrylic is really bad about holding in humidity. Acrylic is also really bad for letting in fresh oxygen. Basically, it's just not the best option that we have available. So, let's upgrade them. I've come to find out that we can cast our own nests. This is called Gypsum Ultra Cal 30. So we need something to cast this in. So I started by taking one of these little plastic shelving units apart. I figured that one of these drawers would be the perfect size, as it was just slightly bigger than a pane of glass that I was able to get from a picture frame that I had. I also have an old mirror lying around. This will be really good to attach the casting to for easy removal later. To keep the plastic tray down, I use this aquarium silicone. And now after it's secured nice and tight, we can take some dirt that we uh, found and we will get it a little wet. Not too wet, more so damp. You just want it to be able to stick together, almost like sand. Simply enough, throw the dirt onto the canvas and start painting. I mean molding. We're trying to make little chambers and walkways. We don't want them too big and we don't want them too small. I've also got these little candle holders. You can buy them on Amazon in a little pack without the candles in them. We're going to take a few of these and flip them upside down and put them in the dirt. This is going to be a spot that will fill up with water later so that they can keep the eggs nice and humid. Now the Solenopsis xyloni is quite a small ant. I'm making this nest a bit bigger than it seems like it needs to be, but that's because this is a multi-queen colony. There's about 8 or so queens in here right now, and each Solenopsis xyloni queen can lay about 1,600 eggs per day. That's a lot. And if you times that by 8, then you've got a much larger number than I just said. Now each queen can live about 2-6 to six years in the wild. I think the longest one has lived about 7 years and that was in captivity, so I think we'll be on a good track with these ladies. I'm not sure really how old they are right now, but I wouldn't say very old. The Solenopsis xyloni, also called the native fire ant or the southern fire ant, has workers that will live about 4-6 to six weeks. They also have 4 life cycle stages, that's egg, larva, pupa, and then adult. The Solenopsis xyloni will go for their nuptial flights between the months of April and August. Now the Solenopsis xyloni are very common in Central America and can be found in various parts of South America. After the Solenopsis xyloni's nuptial flights, they are fully clustral in their initial brooding chambers, just as all Solenopsis species are, to my knowledge. Now this particular colony is only about a year old. They started off in a little test tube setup, but quickly outgrew it. I had hooked them up to an acrylic nest, which was suitable for a while, but they also outgrew rather quickly. It was becoming too much of a chore to feed them or clean up after them or really anything. So I'm hoping that this next nest will be the final nest. I don't have any particular plans for the nest right now. We're just sort of winging it and seeing how it goes. But things tend to work out pretty well that way, right? Anywho. So with the nest now done, we have to move on to the outworld. For the outworld, I thought that this tank that I had found would be a good solution. I had to start by cleaning it out, and that was a bit of a task. But we got it cleaner than I thought we would. Excellent job. Then we just had to drill a little hole in it so we could connect the nest to the outworld. Now it's time to build the outworld. I start with another drawer that I had, 
one of the little plastic ones. I cut them to a size and shape that I think will work, and now I can install them. With just a bit more aquarium sealant, they can hold in with a watertight bond, so that we can have a water feature in the outworld. I just want it to be a bit more natural in there. I'm not really sure what the plan is yet, but I think it's going to look cool. I use spray foam where the landmass will be, just to raise it up a bit. Now I'm going to mix some more aquarium sealant with some rocks and some dirt that we acquired. Mixing those together with a glove and in a well ventilated room. We can apply it straight to the plastic and the spray foam, thus giving us a land mass that is watertight. But now that we have the land masses set up, I think it needs just something a little extra. So on one of these, I've decided to build a small mine shaft that will go within a mountain that we're going to build up. To accomplish this, I take a toilet paper tube and cut it in half. I then apply some of the dirt mixture to the inside of it to create a cave system. I've also taken some little wood pieces and glued them together to make a mine track and a mine cart. This will go inside of the mine shaft to hopefully liven up the world a bit. It'll be cool to see the ants running around in here. Once the mountain is done, we're going to go ahead and add in some greenery and shrubs. A few years ago, I got a little model ship off of Wish. It was made out of wood, and I had never finished putting it together but I still have all the pieces. I'm able to disassemble whatever I did put together and take whatever pieces I didn't put on and we're able to scavenge it and create some new things. So let's see what we can build. To start, I think I want them to have a little ship, something I can maybe put some food or something on so it looks like they're getting deliveries. I think that that would be really cool, which also means that in a minute, we're gonna need to build a dock. But back to the ship, I don't really have a plan for it yet. I just have a general size that I know it needs to be so it fits the ants. Now I have built a few ships in like Minecraft and stuff, so I know a general shape, but this is a completely different building medium, so we'll see how it goes. After putting the hole together, we put on a little captain's quarters, a main deck, and some stairs leading up captain's quarters. We then installed some masts. After doing all this, we gave it a good little paint job, and the finished product looks a little something like this. Honestly, it turned out significantly better than I thought it would. I mean, I had no plan for this. Also, like I said earlier, we went ahead and built the dock that we needed. We also got that mine track I was talking about. I even made a few bridges for them so they can get from island to island. Alright, now that it's made, let's go ahead and install it.
Now after installing the builds, I'm going to add a layer of gravel. This is the gravel that I got out of this tank originally. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I think Paul McCartney said that. I'm going to install a little tube into the gravel. This is to aerate the water and keep it moving. Stagnant water kills. Always remember that. After that's installed, we're going to need a way so that these ants don't get out. So I don't want the ants to be able to get out, but we do need oxygen to be able to get in. So I found this very fine mesh on Amazon. I also have a little wood burning pen. This will be great for melting the plastic in between the mesh, thus embedding it straight into the plastic. This worked significantly better than I thought it would. Now I still need access to this tank so that I can care for the ants, like feeding them and cleaning up after them. So to accomplish this, I'm going to cut a hole in the center. The hole will be the same shape as this little Tupperware that I found. I think that this Tupperware will be the perfect size for me to stick my arm in. Now after cutting the bottom off, we can implant it and affix it with some more sealant, thus making an invulnerable barrier so the ants can't get out. But they can still crawl through the hole, so to fix this, we take another Tupperware of the exact same size and put it in the hole, thus plugging the hole. Now the ants can't get out, and we can get in whenever we need. Alright, now we're getting to one of the final steps. We're adding water. I'm getting excited now. I had found some moss on a tree after going on a hike. I had taken some of this moss and put it in the water. I didn't really expect anything to happen, I just thought it would look nice. Turns out the moss was fully alive, just dormant. The next day after going in the water, I had checked on it, and the moss is fully alive and green. It's actually very happy in its new habitat. For the aquatic section of this tank, in the future, I'm planning on adding some sea monkeys and some shrimp. I think that this will give it a great amount of life, while not being overbearing. I still want it to be an ant tank, but either way, that's for in the future. And with all of that done, it's finally time. We can finally hook up the colony and see if they like it. Let's go. And after plugging in the colony, I'd say it wasn't even 30 seconds before I saw movement in the outworld. I gave them a little cricket, some seeds, and a little bit of honey. Just all the basics that they're going to need for now. I just want them to get used to the area. In the nest, I filled up those teacup lights with water, so it should be plenty humid for them. Also on the outside, I've hooked up some sugar water, so that they always have a fresh supply. Now if you've managed to stick around for this long, I can do nothing but applaud you, and say thank you for watching day one in the new ant tank. Have a great day, and toodaloo. Boo -doo -doo -doo. Watching on busy life from dusk till dawn in the ground they